Okay, so um, I'm going to start with some, well, not experiments, but we're going to do some existence versus some psychological phenomena here, and the results are probably going to be meaningless because there's a sample size of six, and I think to get a T score that's statistically significant, all of you would have to agree, which isn't going to happen. But um, anyway, so you're just going to have to raise your hands. I'm going to ask you, um, I'm going to read your statement, and I'm going to ask you a question about it. Um, so first, um, Linda is a 31-year-old, single, outspoken, and very bright woman. She majored in philosophy. As a student, she was deeply concerned with issues of discrimination and social justice, and also participated in anti-nuclear demonstrations. So, which is more probable? A, Linda is a bank teller. B, Linda is a bank teller and is active in the feminist movement. How many of you say A? Raise your hands. Four. And thus, I assume, how many of you think she is active, active in the Active in the feminist movement and anything teller. Okay, okay. Um, all right, second, uh, second statement. Um, Tom is a 41 year old man. He is very scrawny and thin and has a passion for poetry. He wears large glasses and a button down shirt. Is Tom more likely to be a college, pro a classics professor at an Ivy League institution or a truck driver? How many of you say classics professor? Three, and then the truck driver. All right. Well, lastly, um, are there more letters in the dictionary with K as the first letter or the third letter? I believe you say first letter. All right. Third letter. And two of you apparently. Okay. One of you apparently. <laughs> um, there we go. Okay. So we'll yes. get. <laughs> we'll get to those as they come. Um, <coughs> so, um, in the question of the question of probability and how we view probability is really a subset of the psychological question about what's the nature of human rationality. And so, we have two very broad, extreme camps on this. Uh, there is the economists. Yes, who are jerks, and um, we will be making fun of them ruthlessly throughout this talk. And there's Amos Kahneman and Daniel, Tur uh, Daniel Kahneman and Amos Tversky. They are the psychologists who pioneered the irrigated wrong school of thought. Um, basically, <laughs> what that means is that we're wrong all the time. Uh, so, what characterizes the economists? Um, basically, uh, when it comes to reasoning statistically and reasoning probabilistically, uh, the economic view is that because we're pretty smart creatures and we're you know, rational beings, that we should be able to you know, do pretty statistical operations pretty well. So we're going to answer the normatively correct answer all the time. Um, Kahneman and Tversky say almost exactly the opposite for most, for most domains. And so the question is where do we fall somewhere along this continuum? Um, there's Oh, the, the, the particulars of, of what Kahneman first you're talking about something called heuristics, which are basically like shortcuts to actual algorithms. So an algorithm is like, let's say you're in a grocery store and you want to figure out where the milk is. And so you go down every aisle and you look both ways and you, you explore all possible options and you will find the milk. It will be there, presuming this isn't the co-op and it's the milk. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yes. Um, so, so, that's, so that, that, that algorithm kind of characterizes the economics view. Um, it's slow, it's, it's inefficient, but it always gets the right answer. Um, Kahneman and Tversky advocate for instance heuristics, which are basically shortcuts. Where's the milk? Well, probably near the other dairy, which is probably in the refrigerated section, which is probably on the sides of the grocery stores. Voila, you just found a much, you just found a much faster way to get milk that is likely to be correct. Um, the problem is that these heuristics, well, Correct for a lot of situations, often lead us to make systematic biases. Because we follow them irrespective of the domain that they're in, there are certain domains where we'll just be wrong most of the time. So when it comes to statistical reasoning problems, these happen a lot. So um, given that there's no empirical evidence for the economists so far, and I've just given you a bit of evidence for why Kahneman Tversky may be right, why are we not right here? Well. Um, there are some evolutionary psychologists who I disagree with on almost everything except on this because they're like 
actually setting biological stuff. Um, bees have the ability to reason, uh, reason in what's called, the mathematicians here are gonna hate me for using this term, but Bayesian reasoning. Um, Bayesian, Bayesian reasoning is just the shorthand in, in, in this literature for statistically sound, proper normative reasoning. So if bees have it, there's very little reason we don't. Also, there's a lot of evidence that, um, that we can actually make a lot of deep, that we, that we do have some understanding of, of, of deep statistical laws. And so the question is, it's not so clear cut exactly as to where we fall. Um, to flesh out the heuristics idea a little more, um, the reason that Kahneman and Tversky argue for this, argue for this to, uh, heuristics standpoint is twofold. One is that heuristics ease cognitive burden on us. This is a view of, um, of, of, of psychology where the brain is trying to get the, 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 the thought process will work if it is the path of least resistance uh, to, 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 so, so a, a, success, a successful thought is an efficient and fast thought that actually gets the right answer. So if it eases cognitive burden and it means you don't have to spend a lot of time uh, standing around making a decision, that's going to be accurate. That, that's going to be what you're going to do. And that makes a lot of sense, because otherwise we'd be wandering the grocery store looking for every item and we'd never get anything done, except for grocery shopping. And the co-op there would be awful. So um, <coughs> that's, so, so ease, ease of information flow is one. So I knew the stickiest thing would come back to bite me in the ass. This is really hard to do. Um, I'm going to paste it. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> second, uh, the, second, the, second, um, the, the second argument for the heuristics and biases camp is that we lack the ability to properly encode statistical laws and information when they're presented to us. And there's some evidence for this, which I'll get to in a bit, but what it basically means is that we can learn from our mistakes. And so when the shortcut backfires, we don't understand it. We lack the ability to either understand the specific instance or lack the ability to, to generalize that instance to some general set of probabilistic laws that we can then use to guide future actions. And so Kahn and Tversky are really saying that we don't have any intuitive understanding of probability because we can't make those probabilistic decisions. We're using these heuristics instead. And that we have no way of learning about that probability through life experience and thus generalizing it to some internal set. So they're really saying that we just have no idea what we're doing at all. Um, so uh, th 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 there's, that, that itself doesn't really explain a lot of why this happens. And their explanations, I think, are somewhat limited here. The, the one that makes the most sense to me is that when you're dealing with, 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 with a uh, causal logic, if I, I pick this up, I drop it, I know it's going to happen. I do it again, I know it's going to happen. And I'm able to make that connection that if I drop it, it will fall on the middle of the table and it will make a sound because those things happen again and again. Um, when you're dealing with statistical, statistical events, there's always going to be a certain set of the outcomes that don't happen because only one outcome does happen. And since you're since you can only see the one that does happen, and because you're always thinking in terms of the one that does happen, because that's what makes sense a lot of the times, you're not, good, you're not going to pick up on all, the, on all the outcomes that don't happen. And maybe that's why we're not able to encode, encode this information. But I don't think this answer is really deep enough to say why, why we think this way. Why is it that we don't have any concept of, why don't we have any concept of intuitive statistics? Why don't we, especially if animals as dumb as bees do, so um, I'll now go through some of the evidence for both sides to try to get through this, and then you'll see where the, we'll wind up somewhere around here, and uh, it'll be a fun journey for all. Um, so first, to just give you some, I guess, to, to arm you with some vocabulary of why we suck at statistical reasoning, um, I'm going to go through a few common normative errors that we make. Uh, the first is called the conjunction fallacy. And that's what this first experiment is testing here. These uh, lines, this is the right answer, this is the wrong answer, right, wrong, right, wrong. So, um, yeah. right, there we go. So, congratulations, you guys are better than average. Of course, shock. So, um, the first question about Linda was saying that Linda's either a bank teller or she's a bank teller and something else. So a conjunction is defined as the set of, as the interaction of, of the, the overlapping of two sets. So we've got bank tellers and we've got feminists. And presumably they overlap somewhere. And so you guys were, for the most part, correct in asserting that, yeah, it's more likely that Linda is going to be in this giant circle than in this small sliver. And uh, essentially that means you were able to ignore the description that would suggest that she is a feminist or you were 